the GRE quantitative section or the quant section as it's popularly known. The quant section is one of the most important sections on the GRE. It is important for the simple reason that many of the GRE takers are from the engineering background and most engineering schools require you to have a particular quant score for admissions into their program. The GRE quant generally measures your problem solving abilities through concepts of algebra, arithmetic, geometry and data analysis. A student normally sees a minimum of two quant sections during the test. Sometimes he or she might see the third quant section and this is your experimental section. What is an experimental section? Why is it there? And these things we have already covered in the GRE pattern video. And if any of you have questions about it, I would suggest that you please go there and check out that video. Now each of these sections will contain 20 questions of varying difficulty levels. Some might be medium hard, some might be uh, very hard, some might be uh, extremely hard, some might be easy. So each of these sections will have a mixture of 20 questions from different topics and of different difficulty levels. The time to solve these questions is 30 minutes. According to ETS website, GRE quant section tests you in, on the following topics and I would say that ETS probably is going to uh, test you on more topics than what is, many more topics than what is mentioned here. So under algebra, there are topics like functions, factoring, equations and inequalities, word problems, linear and quadratic equations. Under arithmetic, there is ratio and proportion, percentage, fractions and decimals, exponents and roots, sequence and series, work and rate. Under geometry, there is lines and triangles, polygons and quadrilaterals, circles, solid geometry, coordinate geometry and so on. And under data analysis, which normally many students find it tough, you have mean, median, mode, standard and mean deviation, the normal distribution curve, interquartile range, percentiles, probability, permutation combination and so on. Again, the topics mentioned are just approximates and ETS can test you on topics uh, beyond what is mentioned above. So um, I have just tried to compile a few things here. One is the sample ETS calculator and the type of problems that you might come across on the GRE. Now upon uh, looking at these topics, I know many of you are thinking that these topics are easy and that you have learned them during high school and hence going through this process must be very easy. It is easy, I do agree with that thought and I'll be, uh, you know, I want you to be positive throughout this process. Uh, it is very easy but only when you know the concepts well and when you have practiced enough to stay clear of the honey traps laid by ETS on almost every GRE question. What I mean to say is many times while solving you will come across a situation where you think you have absolutely nailed the sum and after the test when you review you will find that the answer you picked was wrong because GRE not only sets tricky questions but also at times works around with some probable mistakes that a student might commit and puts them up as an answer choice. So there are three rules for doing well on quant. One is knowledge. You should have good grasp on the topics which we just spoke about and more topics, maybe some more that you could learn. Second, the application which means you should know what to apply when. And finally, timing which is the most critical which means you should you should do things swiftly and yet correctly this is the most important of all because if you do not do it in time if you do not do one question in time and you take one extra minute to solve it just means that your pressure starts building automatically and towards the end even if you know the answers to some of those questions the extra pressure 
will will make you commit errors that you would not otherwise do so remember it is three things knowledge application of knowledge and timing that is going to get you that high score in the subsequent videos i will be working with you on the quant section i will be quant working i'm breaking down the quant section into each of those topics and i'm going to work with you on each of those topics and you know help you in this process you know i'll try and make it as easy as possible and as interesting as possible and uh, now let's talk about what type of questions one can expect in the quant section you will have problem solving questions let's look at the problem solving question first if you look at your screen you will see next to the ets calculator you will see that there is a problem solving single answer question which simply means that you have to pick up one only one choice there's only one answer to this question so how do you uh, recognize this normally a one answer question or a single answer question is uh, you know denoted by a oval shaped uh, box or should i call it a box or a oval shaped sign next to the answer choices the mcq will be an oval shaped thing now the multiple answer bit on the other hand to your right you will see problem solving mcq multiple answer when it has multiple answers you will see a square box next to the answer choice so that it means it could have one or more answers and then the third type of problem solving answer is the one where you enter a number and here you have i have uh, put a question there which says enter an answer so you basically work out the number and enter that number into this box next is the quant comparison the quantitative comparison section which contains values and figures in column a and column b uh, you are just expected to compare and find out which of the columns uh, is bigger while it sounds easy in reality it is not easy as the as gre lays a number of traps here and the most uh, loved topic for them in in a quantitative comparison question type is either geometry or uh, it is inequalities so basically in a quantitative comparison you have a quantity quantity a and a quantity b you have the first option if you choose you are going to tell them that quantity a is bigger than b the second option you are going to say quantity b is bigger than a the third option if you choose is going to say that the two quantities are equal and the fourth option is the relationship cannot be determined from the information so you would have to choose from one of the following and uh, you know you should have a good reason to choose one now i will not repeat the three rules for success we have already spoken about it it is knowledge application and timing so we will keep i will keep emphasizing these things as we learn uh, you know as we go through the other videos now what should one do to be successful on the quant topic it is very very simple study all topics so practice never leave one uh, one topic thinking that even if a, to a question comes you might just skip it or just guess the answer that's that's not the way most of the topics covered on gre are normally high school level so you should be able to study all topics you should give yourself enough time to study all topics and master them try and practice as many problems as possible this is again a key the more number of problems you see the wider is your uh, reach basically once you you once you have solved many types of problems in a single topic you would know how to handle uh those uh, questions if a similar question comes up either on the gre or in your practice test so it will help you decode uh, on real gre it will help you decode these this practice questions will help you decode the whole thing the whole question within minutes try to think of other ways a sum can be done this i will again keep speaking if you start off a question and it takes you more than 1 and 1/2 minutes to 2 minutes to solve a question you have to ask yourself if you get the answer right you have to ask yourself um is there a better way to do this question 
or is there a simpler way have i complicated it uh, so is there a better way to do it if you go have gotten the question wrong then obviously one of the methods or some of the steps that you have taken uh, is wrong so you got to improve it anyway so a normal gre question should be able you should be able to solve within a minute maximum a minute and 15 seconds if you're not doing it if you're not be you're not able to solve it in uh, a minute uh, the chances are high that you have not taken the right steps to reach it in many cases also uh, you know you can go ahead and cancel a lot of things so if you are finding except the data interpretation part if you're finding yourself doing too many calculations and too big numbers then certainly you have not cancelled it cancelled things that needed to be cancelled and uh, if possible i would also suggest that you should be giving math specific test you should start off giving individual tests like math be, like, like your tests being math specific and at times your tests being verbal specific and with time you should merge both and then you should start giving full length test so the ideal way to begin your preparation is to start giving math specific test and time your practice as much as possible this is the secret to success timing your practice is going to help you in a in in the long run and you'll be able to finish your uh, paper on time or your test on time if you start timing your even your homework should be timed according to me even when you start off even though you feel that your concepts are not clear you should give yourself 30 minutes for 20 questions you should always do it in increments of 20 and you should multiply it by 1.5 times uh, the number of questions so if you're going doing 20 questions you should give yourself 30 minutes to do it if you're doing 30 then you should give yourself 45 minutes to do it so and so on and so forth so give always give time test and do a minimum of 20 questions every time you sit to practice